But this is not the only way to graph this, okay? I can graph this with A on the vertical axis and R squared on the horizontal axis. So draw for me underneath here, draw for me another set of axes. It can be identical in size. So for this new, yeah, I'm, I'll explain. So for this new graph here, the horizontal axis needs to be labeled a little bit differently. It'll be R squared. So now, when we had um, zero and a radius of zero and um, an area of zero, that's still going to be here. Okay. But now what I want to do is I'm going to plot these same values for R squared, not for R. This is a little bit weird. So remember when R is equal to 1, when R is equal to 1, you got um, an area of pi, right? 3.14. Okay, so I'm going to put that on when I say uh, 1 over here, say, and I think 60 was up here. So all my vertical markings are still the same. Okay, but now as I go forward, I think I've made that too big, but I'll find out in a second. Now as I go forward, I'm not going to label when r equals 2. I want to know what r squared is when r equals 2. So what's r squared? When r is 2, r squared will be 4, right? So I'm going to go across, not to 2, but to 4. So I've got a smaller scale here. 3, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I've definitely made this too small, but that's okay. Okay, when r is equal to 2, r squared is 4, and the area you guys told me was, what was it again? What was your second area that you got? Go ahead, put it in. 4 pi, uh, it's going to be 12.56, uh, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to put that in here. Okay, let me, let me rewind a little bit. Let me rewind a little bit. Because it is, it is a bit weird and tricky. What we were doing here was, I would ask you for a value of r, like say 1, and then I'd ask you to find out what the area was. Okay? Now down here I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm not asking you for a value of r, I'm asking for a value of r squared. Okay? Alright, how about this one here, when r equals 3, what's r squared? It's 9. So on my horizontal axis, I'm going to go all the way to 9. So I'm at 4 at the moment. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. What was the area this time? 9 times pi. This is the 28-ish one, wasn't it? 28 or so? Hi. Which kind? Uh, those are, there's some, how many do you need? Is that enough? Because I think I only have 10 max. I have keys, hold on. How many are there? Can you count? And you need more than that? You reckon that's enough? Okay, well come back and let me know if you need more. Did you confirm for me? Was it 28? 28-ish, okay. So I'm going to find where that is, 28. Somewhere around here. Okay, now my last one, I haven't made this quite big enough, so I'm going to make this go a little further. My last one was for r equals 4. See that? When r equals 4, what is r squared? 16. So I'm at 9 right now, so I'm going to go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There we go. Now what was the value? Eliana said 50 and a bit, right? 50 and a bit. So that's going to be somewhere around here. I'd say. Okay, now I want you to look at these points again. This is the cool bit. On this, you got a parabola, right? Because you, predictably, you had something squared. But what's happening here? It's a straight line, right? Why is that? It's because what I'm comparing is A versus R squared. I need to rewrite this. And remember, they are directly in proportion, which means a straight line. Okay? So what I can do is, I can graph A against R, or alternatively, I can graph A against R squared. 
I could graph it against r cubed or out of the power of 4 or anything I really like, okay? If I graph A against something that it's directly proportional to, you will always get a straight line, okay? So the equation of this line is exactly the same as what we had before. This is A equals pi r squared. This is also A equals pi r squared, but my axes are different. Do you see that? My axes are different. Um, so you get a different shape because you're comparing a different kind of quantity. Okay. Sure. Okay. So I'll, I'll go through it step by step. Right. What you want to do is you find a value for the, your independent variable. Okay. So say r equals four. Okay. When r equals four, what's a equal to? And you said it was fifty point whatever. Fifty point two six blah 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 blah. blah. Is that what it was? Yep. yep. So now you know what value for A you should do. So I went up to 50 or wherever that was. Okay. But now when I look at the horizontal thing, I don't want to plot R equals 4 because it's not an R axis. It's an R squared axis. So I need to know what R squared is, which in this case is 16. Okay. So these guys are my coordinates. That guy there is 16, comma. 50.26, etc. Okay? So do it just like you did before, but your extra step is you've got to know what this axis is actually talking about, which is r squared in this case. Okay? Yeah. So you will often be asked, uh, you'll sometimes be asked, graph A against this or graph A against that. And depending on what they ask you to graph against, your axes will be different, your shape will be different. Okay?